Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So the first show for 2016. Yeah, I know I skipped a lot of uh, a lot of episodes there. Um, did the Alchemate and then we didn't do anything else after that. Um, anyway, the, the, the product is pretty cool by the way. I've used it um, a few times since then. So uh, it's been, I don't know if how accurate it is, but it's definitely felt like it's accurate enough. Let's put it that way. Um, so uh, December and in, in January, this is like the last week of January that I'm recording these. A uh, little bit hectic for me uh, with the day job and, and trying to get a schedule. So uh, let's let's get some little update real quick. So if you don't follow me on Twitter or Facebook, um, and if you don't, why not? If you're watching this, um, anyway, uh, I will be taking the advanced sommelier, advanced som uh, course this June in Dallas. Uh, I'm super excited about that. And um, uh, what that means is now I'm, now I'm in the pipeline to take the exam. So, um, uh, so the short answer is I will be taking the exam next year. I don't see any reason why I wouldn't be. Um, so now it's time to do a lot of studying. So that's how this website, that's how this podcast, web show, whatever you want to call it, started was my diary of studying for the intro exam with the with the intent of becoming a certified sommelier, which once I reached certified, I was like, well, I've accomplished the goal, so do I keep the show going, which I did. Um, so now we're back to, uh, it, it, there's gonna be a lot of studying on my part. The thing is though, the wines, the wines won't necessarily always tie in with, um, maybe the exact subject matter I'm studying at the time, just because I have wines that have been sent for me for review, like this one. Um, so, you know, they, I ask, they, I get asked about wine. I go, yes, send me the wine. So it's whatever comes in. Plus, um, I just can't see it. It's down here on the floor. Um, just got my um, uh, delivery from Underground Cellar. You had another 12 bottles from them that I purchased a while ago. And I think I have another 12 or 20 something bottles in my online seller. Plus I still have wines from Psalm Select, um, which we'll be reviewing uh, for next week. Um, well, I still have Psalm Select wines left over, but I also have Psalm Select wines in my cloud seller, whatever they call it on that. So I got a lot of wines in the pipeline that I can review. Um, but what I will end up doing is as I study for these wines, it'll help my other studies. So um, how am I doing my studying? Well, flashcards have never been a great thing for me. Um, I don't typically do well with them. Um, I either just have to flat out just read and try to memorize things, um, which actually works well for the most part, um, or uh, take a quiz. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be developing quizzes um, for myself, and uh, actually it's gonna be an online quiz. It'll be through the website. Uh, you won't have access to it, but I have it on the website so that I can access it at any time instead of just being at home in front of my computer with a quiz program, which I have some of those. Um, and just doing it on a computer itself, where I'm I have to be at home to do it, or I have to have, my, or if I have it on my laptop, I have to have the laptop on it. So this way, I have ability to take quizzes and do all that. Um, I do actually eventually hope to create or, or make these quizzes available to others online as to whether I would charge for it or not. I don't know, but it's a lot of freaking work to do this. And yes, I know there's tons of practice quizzes out there. So my quizzes aren't necessarily gonna be any better or worse than anyone else's, and I'll probably even use some of their questions, which um, if I do, then I probably have to have some type of like on the quiz questions they came from, blah, 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 and please don't sue me for copyright infringement. Um, but I'll probably be able to create my, note, my own quiz, my own questions just fine. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's what's been going on with the update. Uh, so we're gonna do that, do that course that later this year, the exam next year, uh, a lot of my, free time and personal time is going to be spent studying um, uh, every day 
So, uh, and I will try to keep on a somewhat regular schedule for the show. Um, like I said, we've got, I'm going to record three shows today, um, mainly because I'm not going to have any time after today, uh, over the next two to three weeks to record anything. So I kind of have to record a, a bunch. I was going to hold off on the third one because, uh, the company that sent me that, bo the bottle of wine where we're, I'm reviewing for the third thing I'm doing tonight. Um, they sent me an email today saying, Hey, would you like to re you know, uh, review another wine from the same producer? And I thought, well, I could do them both at the same time, but in this case, I don't have time. I, I got to get this done. I don't want to delay any longer. So with all that said, let's, uh, let's get going with the first wine and not that one. And all right. So hello, there we go. So uh, wine number one, and the only wine that we are reviewing today, um, mainly because we're gonna call this the Super Bowl special. Why? Because they sent me a bottle of wine. I didn't realize it was, I didn't know it actually was coming. And they sent me a 1.5 liter. Wow, that's a lot of wine. But um, they sent it to me as a Super Bowl type of wine. So um, this is uh, sent by the uh, people from Creative Palette and, um, uh, this is the Frontera uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot blend 2014. Um, this is made by the Concha y Toro uh, family uh, or, or um, uh, winery in Chile. Uh, this actually is a Chilean wine. Uh, they do have holdings in Chile and South um, uh, Chile in Argentina. They also um, they also own the Fetzer brand in the United States, and the, the, the Fetzer brand makes, um, sorry, they made a yawn all of a sudden, uh, makes Bonterra, which um, I didn't realize. If I, I thought I had it written down somewhere that Bonterra was organic, but I didn't put it in my notes, but I remember reading that they were organic. So this wine uh, is 1.5 liters, so that's two bottles, the equivalent of two standard bottles of wine. Um, this typically sells for around $12 at retail. Uh, and if you get the $7.50, um, then it's around uh, $6. So it makes sense. Um, <laughs> so uh, when they sent me the little thing, uh, unfortunately for Jane at... Uh, for Jane at Creative Palette, the Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 did not make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, but for Kate, uh, the Patriots did. Um, so Super Bowl, I mean, it's one of the biggest television events of the year. You got lots of food, wine, whatever. I know I've done a football pairing uh, at least once with wine and food. Um, so what do you want to bring to the football party? Are you going to bring Chateau Margaux? Are you going to bring DRC? Are you going to bring, you know, something like Cardinal or La Coya or Bond or Screaming Eagle from all those California places? You're going to bring Sasakaya? No, you're not going to bring any of that stuff, right? Because the, the even though wine lovers will probably appreciate the wine necessarily, most of the people you're probably bringing a wine to a Super Bowl party with, unless it's a bunch of Psalms, um, are going to be people that just look at wine as a beverage, right? It's just something, you know, something different than beer and liquor. So you want to bring something that's going to be tasty and it's going to be good and it's going to be reasonable. Um, you know, you're not necessarily going to bring three buck chuck or two or four or however much, however much it is in your state, though you could, and it's just wine and it's just people are just going to be pouring it and they're not going to think about it. Just like you wouldn't be bringing out the Stoli Elite for the vodka now, would you? Um, you wouldn't be bringing out, you know, the Chimay for the beer. You know, you're going to be drinking, you know, Miller Lite or Bud Light or PBR or whatever, right? So, so every wine has a function. So that's what this is going to be. Frontera, um, now they've been making, this is like their biggest brand for Concha e Toro. Uh, this is their number one selling, uh, number one selling brand. Uh, number one sales in Chilean wine. It's, they, it's dubbed America's favorite, ch favorite. Chilean wine. Um, the main company is the leading exporter of wines from South America. They were established in 1883 uh, and they make a wide range of wines from things like Frontera all the way up to Don Melkor and, and, and similar, um, similar wines like that, higher end wines. So they make the whole gamut. It's like, you know, like KJ, like Kendall Jackson, they, you know, 
KJ Chardonnay and Cabernet, you know, they pay the bills. This is the workhorse for them. This pays the bills, the, this brand, so that they can afford to have the higher end stuff. They can, they can pump money into that and have super high quality wines for people that want that. All right, so um, let's see. Let me see if there's anything else on the... Uh, it was 85% Cab, 15% Merlot. It comes from the Central Valley of Chile. And I'm going to see if there's anything else in their handouts that um, they wanted or that, that's in here that I think we should need to talk about. Um, oh, Frontera means frontier in Spain. So um, uh, the, the, the wines come from, like I said, the Central Valley of Chile. I don't think I said that. Uh, so the grapes, the grapes for this, for Frontera wines in general, come from the uh, Central Valley for the most part. Um, they say to the north lies the arid and barren Atacama Desert, to the south lie the ice fields of Antarctica, to the west the Pacific Ocean, and to the east the majestic Andes Mountain Range. Um, so yeah, you got that. And they make a whole bunch of stuff. Now when you go to the website, this particular wine wasn't listed, the Cab Merlot blend, um, but uh, they have you know, a bunch of white wines, red wines, and they have this blend, and then they call Vintage Red, which is, they say Shiraz, so I guess in South America they use Shiraz instead of Syrah. Um, Shiraz, Cab, and Merlot as their grapes for that one. Uh, then it also says, Frontier is also socially, uh, it's all about social responsibility, uh, committed to the overall pres preservation of the natural environment. Um, so what they do is they try to, I guess one of the things that they do is they, they use lighter, um, lighter weight bottles for the Frontera range. And let me tell you, I mean, with the, uh, with the Corvin, you wouldn't think the Corvin would add that much weight, but it does. Um, when I lifted this bottle up to put on the table, it felt like, it felt like, you know, a, a normal, well, I won't bring those out. It felt like a normal wine bottle, like weight wise, which it, it's probably not exactly the same amount because you got twice as much liquid. So that alone is going to be, it's going to be, you know, heavier, but, oh, I should have. All right, so let's get this poured out here. So yeah, you can do this on a, on a Magnum, which is what 1.5s are called. Ooh, but trying to pour like that, that was a little bit, a little bit much. Okay. Now, yeah, yeah, again, it doesn't really feel like it's that much, um, it doesn't feel like it's that much uh, heavier than a regular wine bottle. And taking the, taking this off actually, you know, is, is a difference, even though this is pretty light on its own. All right, so let's just get into the wine. So pretty typical color. Um, nothing, nothing to, uh, I mean, nothing to really write home about, but you know, just a, a good garnet color, kind of a, not quite a watery rim, but it does, it's not, it's not deep all the way throughout, but it's, it's I'd say medium intensity on the color. Let's check out the nose. Red fruits. Red fruits, a little, you know, a little woodsy, little, little cigar box, cedar box to it. Um, I don't really get anything creamy out of it. I don't really get a lot of floral. Um, the wood part is really about the only thing I get that you could call earthiness or minerality or non-fruit aromas. Let's check it out. It's not a bad wine. I mean, for 12 bucks, 
six dollars for for a regular size bottle. So is this is this you know hundred dollars you know wine? No, but this is going to be a good satisfying wine for you know especially a Super Bowl party or an everyday drinking wine. And that's what we want, right? We want stuff that's good for everyday drinking. You know, we're not we're not all balling and and, and drinking hundred hundred dollar bottles of wine. Um, I mean, maybe you are, but I'm not. I mean, I have some good wine at the house just because I visited some nice wineries a year ago, but I'm almost out of those wines. So whatever's left is whatever I buy online. But, um, you know, it's not a bad wine. I mean, it's an everyday drinking wine. Um, you got some red fruit on it. Um, it's a little bit of that cedar box on, on the palate. It's also a bit of um, something else. I would say it might be a little bit of hint of um, of pepper, of green pepper. Not a whole lot. Um, it does feel like there might be a little bit of volatile acidity, but not a whole lot. Um, it's a pleasant wine. Uh, tannins are, I would say, moderate. They're not super drying up my mouth. The Merlot's probably softening the cab, even though it's only at 15%. Um, you know, the, the, the tannins are right up here on, on the gums. Um, so, but it's not, it's not like it's just like, oh, I'm dry, I'm too dry. Okay, I mean, it's it's not like that. Um, it's an easy drinking wine, and it's, it's it fulfills everything it's supposed to be. So for $12 or six bucks for, for a, you know, a small, a small bottle, like I said, are you going to be, are you going to be like impressing a master psalm, you know, with, well, I don't say that. Are you going to be impressing some wine snob? Let's put it that way, better that. Because a master psalm might be like, hey, for six bucks, it's not bad, right? Are you going to be pressing some wine snob with this? Probably not. Are you going to fool them into thinking this is some, then thinking this is Don Melkor? No, you're not. But are you going to go to a party and a bunch of people are going to be there and you brought a big ass bottle of wine and everyone's going to be like, yeah, dude, awesome. And they drink the wine. They're like, man, this is good wine. They're going to think it's good. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't suck. Let's put it that way. But like I said, it's not, I mean, it's, if you, if you were trying to tell me this was some $20, $30, $40 bottle of wine, I'd be like, oh, uh, no, no. But for six to 12, you know, six bucks, 12 bucks, whatever. Even if this was a $12, $750, i would be like, oh, that's all right. You know, price fairly. And that's, that's, why I'm, that's where I'm going with this. Like I said, I like the wine. It's a good $6 bottle of wine. If you need something for the, for the Super Bowl or anything else. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna be horrible. All right, that's the only one we're doing. All right, so um, if you want to leave a comment, throw a comment who you think is gonna win the Super Bowl. I think New England's gonna win. I'd like to see Peyton and the and the Denver Broncos win. I want to see Peyton get another ring with another team. That's what I'd like to see. You don't get to see that very often in the NFL. Occasionally it happens with other sports, but NFL. And I'm sure if I spent the time to look it up, I'm sure somebody somewhere as a player has gotten a ring from two different teams. But I don't know of any major star players that have ever done it. So I would think that maybe Peyton would be the first. And I like Peyton. I think he's a good guy. I don't care about all that stuff, that BS that they were talking about. Um, I, think it's, I think it's overblown BS with the HGH or whatever it was. But uh, anyway... I'm going to go for the Broncos. I'm off on the Super Bowl. Remember, kids, I do have a day job. That's how it pays. pays for Speaking of paying for all this, if you'd like to send me a donation, there's a button over here for PayPal. You can send me a donation that way. That's really the only way you can send a donation. I mean, by watching all these videos, especially now that I have more commercials and blah, 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 blah. I mean, you are contributing to it. But if you'd like to add some more instead of the, you know, couple bucks I get from the ads. I mean, literally a couple dollars from the ads. Um, you can send me a few more ducats to help bu buy more wine. Um, also tell your friends about it. Hit me up on iTunes. Um, I, I am, a, I, the podcast is there. I'm the only video wine review show on iTunes in the United States and probably the world at this point. Um, 
and leave me a great rating, five star rating will, will, really helps. Um, maybe a, a nice comment or two about how awesome the show is, or maybe it's maybe not awesome, but you think you like it, it's good. But um, so leave some comments below at the website or on YouTube and uh, friend me up. The link's above the friend me up. I think that's it. We're gonna end up, uh, we're gonna wrap this up for tonight. Uh, I got two more to record. So uh, I'd like to everyone, I'd like to thank everyone for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time. Spurs!